This was Francois Ngata Tombao Baye, the former president of the nation of Chad and one of the most strange dictators the continent has ever had. When he was at the helm, Tombao Baye put in place some strange policies which raised quite a few eyebrows and led to a disgruntled populace in Chad. For instance, he ordered all high government officials, civil servants and military officers to undergo a tradition called Yondo, which was a sometimes fatal initiation ritual. The Yondo ordeal which Tombao Baye himself underwent as an adolescent is known to involve flogging, facial scarring, dragging and mock burials. Within five years of having taken office in 1960, Tombao Baye's heavy-handed approach and repressive regime had alienated a large segment of the population, especially northerners and easterners, and had spurred rebellions across the country of Chad. In this episode of African Biographics, we take a look at Francois Ngata Tombao Baye, the dictator from Chad. Francois Tombao Baye was born in Beseda in southern Chad on the 15th of June 1918. His father was a prominent trader and he was one of the Sara ethnic group, the prominent ethnicity of Chad's five southern prefectures. Very little is known about his childhood except that he received primary education in Chad and then went on to receive his secondary education in Congo Brazzaville. The young Francois studied to become a teacher also in Congo Brazzaville due to the lack of in-country schools in Chad. It was while working as a teacher in the late 1940s that he developed an interest in civic life. By 1946, Tombao Baye had become the president of an independent trade union based in Sara, Chad. He was also instrumental in forming a chapter of the Chadian Progressive Party, the PPT, in Sar, and rallied members of his clan and other Sara speakers to the party. The PPT had been formed to fight for independence in Chad, which at the time was a French colony. The leader of the PPT at the time was a man by the name Gabriel Lisset, who was an expatriate French citizen born and educated in Panama. Lisset's story and background was quite a peculiar one. He became a French colonial administrator and in this role was posted to Chad in 1946. In November of the same year, Lisset was elected as deputy to the French National Assembly. It was in February of 1947 that Gabriel Lisset founded the PPT, which was the country's first African political party. Now back to Francois Tombaubaye. Francois was quite effective in mobilizing the anti-colonial movement in Chad, and so in 1949, the French administration responded to these political activities by stripping him of his job as a teacher in public service. He had to look for other jobs and at some point he worked as a brickmaker. Despite this discrimination that he faced from the French colonial authorities because of his activism, Tombao Baye was elected as a deputy in the Colonial Territorial Assembly in 1952 and re-elected in 1957 and again in 1959. At the same time, within the PPT, antagonism towards Gabriel Lisset because of his background as a foreigner started growing and so the leadership of the organization was transferred to Francois Tombao Baye. After ousting Gabriel Lisset as the leader of the PPT, Tombao Baye assumed the presidency of the Provisional Government of Chad in March of 1959 and in June of the same year was chosen as Prime Minister of the newly elected Legislative Assembly. Gabriel Lisset, whose wings had been clipped, became the Deputy Prime Minister in charge of economic coordination and foreign affairs. Now at the helm, Francois Tombao Baye soon consolidated enough support from the south and north to isolate the opposition into a collection of conservative Muslim leaders from central Chad. The latter group would form a political party in January of 1960, but its parliamentary representation steadily dropped as Francois Tombao Baye wooed individual members to the PPT. On August 11, 1960, Francois Tombao Baye became the first president of independent Chad. Independence brought many challenges to the new Chadian government. Chad was a vast nation with diverse territory and few natural resources. The communication and transport networks were poorly developed and the country's population was impoverished and also ethnically diverse. The colonial powers that had created the country's boundaries had done little to promote economic interdependence, political cooperation or cross-cultural understanding amongst the various groups in Chad. The northern part of the country was Muslim and heavily influenced by North African culture while the southern part practiced traditional religions or Christianity with cultural ties to coastal colonies like Nigeria and the Ivory Coast. 
These were all the complexities that the new leader, Francois Tombaubaye, had to deal with. Unfortunately, the people of Chad who had hoped that the country's first president might turn out to be a state builder were soon disappointed. Chad under Francois Tombaubaye experienced worsening economic conditions as well as exacerbation of ethnic and regional conflicts. Francois Tombaubaye's government was also dominated mostly by the southerners and this in turn created friction with the northern part of the country. All of this was only made worse by his autocratic style of leadership. From the onset, Francois Tombaubaye demonstrated an autocratic style along with the distrust of democratic institutions. For example, one week before the country gained independence, Tombaubaye purged Gabriel Lisset from his own party, declaring Gabriel Lisset a non-citizen while he was traveling abroad and barred him from returning to Chad. This incident was the first in an excessive series of Tombaubaye's increasingly authoritarian actions to eliminate or neutralize his opponents. To increase his power as well as his freedom of action, Tombaubaye declared a ban on all political parties except for his PPT. When serious rioting occurred in 1963 in Jamena and a city called Amtiman, the government declared a state of emergency and dissolved the National Assembly. And as part of a major campaign against real and imaginary political opponents, Francois Tombaubaye created a special criminal court. He also went on to eliminate Muslim opponents and promoted southerners, particularly his fellow Sara tribesmen within the government. By the end of the year 1963, the country's prisons contained the who's who of Chadian politicians. In June 1964, Chad's new National Assembly granted Tombaubaye complete control over all appointments to the political bureau of the PPT, which by then was the sole source of political authority in Chad. Now, with the PPT, government and upper echelons of the civil service now heavily stocked with loyalists and with opposition leaders in prison, Francois Tombaubaye was in full command of the country. But this was not the worst part of it all. More was to come. Francois Tombaubaye had somewhat of a noble idea to Africanize the nation of Chad and move it away from colonial relics. With this in mind, he started with Africanizing the civil service and security forces and this was to be done as rapidly as possible. Between 1960 and 1963, the number of French officials in the central government administration declined from 95 to 30 and by the end of 1962, the entire territorial administrative structure was in Chadian hands. Unfortunately, Africanization was not entirely popular amongst the population of Chad, especially Chad's farmers and herders, despite their deep resentment of the French colonial rule. And this is why, because of the abrupt purge of French officials, there was a decline in the quality of government service that was immediately apparent. This was in part because of the usual difficulties of such a transition, but also because many of the newly hired and promoted Chadians were less experienced and less adequately trained than their departing French counterparts. Also because the great majority of the country's western educated and French-speaking citizens were southerners, to most people in the north, the policy of Africanization often represented to them a southernization of the Chadian government. What appeared to some observers to be progress in African self-government was perceived by those from the north and central areas to be an increasingly blatant seizure of power by the southerners. To many in the north and central Chad, the southern Chadians were perceived as simply almost as alien and arrogant in the same way as the departing French. At the same time, Francois Tombaubaye's failure to establish hiring and training policies geared to achieving greater ethnic and regional balance in public administration was one of his most serious shortcomings. To add insult to injury, another issue that made Tombaubaye increase the discontent amongst the masses was when he imposed an additional tax in 1964 under the pretense of a national loan. This national loan was supposed to fund local industry, but truthfully speaking, the loan was funded by imposing spine-crushing taxes on an already impoverished populace. On top of that action, some government administrators were allegedly forcing citizens in rural areas to make payments at three times the official taxation rates. Tombaubai also failed to properly integrate the central and northern Chadian leaders into the political conversation. These leaders often expressed their dissatisfaction with Francois Tombaubaye's government in a violent manner and the response of the government was just as violent. 
When Muslims rioted in Jamena, the capital, in September of 1963, following the arbitrary arrest of three Muslim leaders, the government reacted swiftly and repressively. Now, Francois Tombaubaye really put the foot to the pedal and accelerated the Africanization process in 1973. Chad underwent a cultural revolution called Authenticity and it was largely based on the Africanization policies that had been developed in Mobutu Sese Seko's Zaire. In Chad, African names replaced European titles for people and places. Francois Tombaubaye himself chose the name Gata, meaning chief. He was no longer Francois Tombaubaye, he was now Ngata Tombaubaye. This policy from Tombaubaye, which was also called Chaditude, was there to foster a sense of national pride and identity. We ordered the four million citizens of the former French colony to change their foreign first names just like he did. City and street names were also Africanized. The capital, Fort Lamy, was renamed to N'Djamena. Initially, this cultural revolution steered little controversy and was generally well received. But things soon took a turn for the worse, and this is why. During this process, Ngata Tombaubaye ordered the revival of an ancient pagan tribal custom known as Yondo, which was a grueling initiation rite practiced by his native Sara tribal group of southern Chad. Ngata Tombaubaye had himself gone through this process as an adolescent, and this Yondo ritual is known to involve floggings, facial scarring, being buried alive, dragging, and really growling endurance tests like crawling naked through a nest of ravenous termites. Some Sara tribesmen who had been raised in the bush did not always survive the ritual, which suggests that it was even more difficult for the urbanized Chadians to endure this ritual as well. President Ngata Tombaubaye even decreed that high government officials, regardless of their religious beliefs, be among the first group of initiates to go through this yondo ordeal. Well, the Minister of Agriculture objected, stating that the two-month program would interfere with these efforts to increase farm production in the drought-stricken country. The Education Minister also objected, arguing that the initiation of teachers would interrupt the school schedule. And so a seven-month delay was granted, but just afterwards, a thousand Chadian officials were sent to the south to the Yondo camps. From mid-1973 to April of 1974, an estimated 3,000 civil servants, including two cabinet ministers and one colonel, went through the Yondo initiation. Now, because the Yondo rites were perceived as being anti-Christian, resistance to the process exacerbated antagonisms along clan and religious lines in the nation of Chad. His actions created disaffection among civil servants, army officers, and students. People in Chad really resented President Gata Tombaubaye even more, and all of this soon contributed to his inevitable downfall. As we have since established, Ngata Tombaubaye openly discriminated against the northern and central regions of Chad and established a repressive regime that contributed to Chad's fragmentation during his 15-year tenure as president. Major regional rifts started emerging in Chad and they were further complicated by intra-regional divisions, especially in the north, where numerous warlords started to emerge. These warlords each had an ethnic-based following and they attempted to overthrow Tombaubaye's regime. In 1966, these northern rebels would unite to become a force known as Frolinat. Frolinat established bases in Sudan and received assistance from Algeria and Libya. To make matters worse, after Colonel Muammar Gaddafi seized power in Libya in 1969, he went on to exploit the political instability in Chad by stationing troops in northern Chad and by channeling support to the various Chadian insurgents. This made President Francois Tombaubaye expel Libyan diplomats in 1971, blaming them for inciting a coup attempt and inspiring unrest within Chad. Despite this though, in general, Francois Tombaubaye often sought a balance between concessions and resistance to Muammar Gaddafi's regional designs, hoping to persuade Gaddafi to reduce his support for these Chadian insurgents. As a way to indicate that he didn't want to cause trouble for Muammar Gaddafi, Francois Tombaubaye often voiced a willingness to cede the territory called the Auzor Strip to Libya and did not object to Libyan troops being stationed there after 1973. 
However, the people of Chad generally did not like this setup between Tombaobaye and Muammar Gaddafi's Libya, and all of these actions did lead to Fongata Tombaobaye's popularity amongst the masses. Across the nation of Chad, there soon erupted renewed protests against Ngata Tombaobaye's unpopular and weakened regime. By the mid 1970s, Ngata Tombaobaye faced armed opposition in all parts of the country. During his 15 years of harsh and eccentric rule, President Ngata Tombaobaye had survived at least seven major assassination attempts. Early in the year 1975, a few months before his death, a former head of the PPT's women's wing was tried for attempting to kill Ngata Tombaobaye by witchcraft. This lady allegedly hired wizards to pierce the eyes of a black sheep symbolizing Tombaobaye and bury it alive. Ngata Tombaobaye was finally ousted in a coup d'etat. On April 13, 1975, following a rumor of renewed purges in the army, junior officers from the south effected this coup. In a surprise sunrise attack, uniformed soldiers and police stormed the white ward presidential palace in Jamena. Francois Ngata Tombaobaye was either killed in crossfire or possibly summarily executed. This marked the end of Francois Ngata Tombaobaye's turbulent 15-year rule of the nation of Chad. Don't forget to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all for tuning in. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.